And we're following a developing story in the sports world after pro athletes boycotted their games yesterday to protest racial injustice. All three NBA playoff games had to be postponed yesterday. And now we are waiting to see if our Nuggets will play their scheduled game today. So we do want to bring on Justin Adams here now with the latest. This has been absolutely fascinating to watch. Dominic and I were, were chatting a moment ago. It's as if these players are saying enough is enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Black Lives Matter. We mm -hmm. want to end the killings. And it's really interesting that they're taking this stance. Yeah, 100 percent, especially understanding what they have and understand the power that they have as athletes as well is something that we're really getting to see. The Denver Nuggets were supposed to play the Utah Jazz in the playoffs today, but just like that, it looks like that's going to be up in the air. According to ESPN, the players will have a meeting this morning to discuss how they will proceed with the playoffs. And this is continuing after a three hour meeting that the players had last night where the Los Angeles Lakers and the Los Angeles Clippers voted to walk out the remainder of the postseason. Now yesterday, three games were postponed as the Milwaukee Bucks decided not to take the floor yesterday in protest of James Blake and James Blake, a black man. He was shot seven times in the back by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin on Sunday. The protest sparked postponements from the WNBA, Major League Soccer and three games in Major League Baseball. We are calling for justice for Jacob Blake and demand the officers be held accountable. For this to occur, it is imperative for the Wisconsin State Legislature to reconvene after months of inaction and take up meaningful measures to address issues of police accountability, brutality, and criminal justice reform. We encourage all citizens to educate themselves, take peaceful and responsible action, and remember to vote on November 3rd. Several local stars took a stance as well. Nuggets Jamal Murray tweeted this out. We demand justice in baseball. Rockies outfielder Matt Kemp sat out in last night's game saying on Instagram. I cannot play the game. I love so much tonight knowing the hurt and anguish my people continue to feel. The Colorado Rapids also set out their game against FC Dallas and the Colorado Avalanche. They did play their game last night as Nazem Kadri had the game winning goal. Big goal, but he spoke about the importance of demanding change this is a problem that's uh gone on for far too long and you know the signs and the hockey ops is great and everything but you know eventually words get stale and it's about uh it's about action and, and uh you know making a difference the nba's board of governors will have a meeting today at nine o'clock and that's the same time that the players are having their meeting as well now what comes with this meeting is will determine the status of the rest of the NBA season. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens from there and the next move that the players want as well. That's the question. Mm -hmm. Where do they go from here? How long question. do they keep this up? Yeah, that's a great question. And you know, the spotlight's on them right now, especially while they're in the bubble. We'll see how everything will persist from here. Yeah, and sports is powerful. I mean, you saw Kylan Hill in mm -hmm. Mississippi, the mm -hmm. running back, who yeah. said, hey, change this flag or I'm not playing. Right. And it got done like that. Yeah, you so, can go back yeah. a couple of years as well where Missouri, there are literally players on the Missouri football team that said we will not play until the president of the university is gone the next week he was gone as well so this is something that we'll see in they can really elicit change mm -hmm. so we'll see justin thank, thank you, you so much thanks so much but hopefully we have the home field advantage this time it's been a while since they've won Justin. yeah without a doubt look yeah. it's going to be a cold one but it's been a long mm -hmm. long time since the broncos beat the kansas city chiefs hopefully they can snap the losing streak this time around now the last time that the broncos beat the chiefs that was back in 2015 that's when bradley roby scooped up the fumble to get it done but since then it's been all kansas city and even the snowflakes couldn't stop this one as they've won nine straight over the Broncos. Now to stop the streak, Denver will have to find a way how to stop Patrick Mahomes and good luck to that one. The Chiefs quarterback has plenty of weapons with Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill and Sammy Watkins. But recently it's been the run game that's been the most dangerous. Uh, Clyde, Clyde uh, Edwards Hilaire is the second leading rusher in the NFL and uh, before the Broncos can focus in on stopping Patrick Mahomes, they need to focus in on Hilaire first. You know, he's a great back and uh, well, I don't know, he had 160, 70 yards rushing the other night. He's, had, he's run the ball good all season. They have another weapon. They have another dimension to their game. And uh, when you add him to who Mahomes can deal the ball to, to the wide outs and the tight ends, you know, they're double tough to stop. Now, if the Broncos are going to keep up with the Chiefs, then the offense, you know, has to get going. But fortunately, 
Broncos might be able to get some help. K.J. Hamler and Noah Fant could both be back in the lineup, and they're going to be needed. The Chiefs love to get after the quarterback. They blitz 40% of the time, which is the fourth most in the NFL. But Drew Lockie says, look, he's not worried about all that extra pressure he's going to see on Sunday. As long as I know my job and I know where to go with the football, I am disciplined in my footwork and going from read to read, then I feel like you can really play me however you want. As long as I know my job, um, I'll be confident out there. Now, last week, the Broncos won by kicking six field goals. But field goals won't be the Chiefs this week because you have to score touchdowns. So with that in mind, I recruited my 18-month-old son just to show the Broncos just how easy it is to get into the end zone. Check it out. All right, son. Son, this week the Broncos are taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, and they're not going to beat them if they're just kicking field goals, okay? So you got to show them how it's done. Run to mama. Get into the end zone. Run, into, run to mama. Go, go, go. Yay! All right, touchdown. There you go, son. Woo! There you go. Yes! I told you how to go. Yes! What's wrong? What's wrong? What happened? What, what was the problem? <laughs> it's, just, it's just that easy, right? It's just that simple. Just you're, get to the end zone. You're a stage dad. You're, you're that dad. It's like, do this, do that. Okay, the little baby gets a bottle as a reward. I mm -hmm. love it. Yes, yeah, so and then I spike it. So that's the and way you do it, right? Yeah, you know what? It. Maybe we need to entice our Broncos then with some good food there at the go. end zone. Uh, look, it worked for me, so it should work for them too. I can just see you guys spraying milk to celebrate in the locker room. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than champagne, it's the formula. That and orange slices will always work out. <laughs> oh, he's adorable. Thank you. Yeah, we that needed that awesome. this morning, that didn't we? We needed cool. cute babies. Yeah. All right, thank you, cool. Justin. Broncos are set with their fifth offensive coordinator now in as many seasons. I'm ready to announce that I, too, will be an offensive coordinator. You're on the list? Yeah, Justin probably as okay, well. Okay, well, here we yeah. go. A lot of turnover, and maybe the Broncos are desperate if they're hiring out of here, CBS4. <laughs> Justin Adams is here now. So the name of the guy that you need to remember is Pat Shermer. Mm -hmm. He's the guy who is set with a really big task ahead of him. Right, Justin? Yeah, has a whole lot of work to do as well because the Broncos' offense was not good last year. For the fifth time since 2016, the Denver Broncos will have a new offensive coordinator and his job will be to revive an offense that's near the bottom of the league. Pat Shermer was officially announced as a play caller yesterday and he has 21 years of coaching experience in the NFL. The last time Shermer was an offensive coordinator, he was named the assistant coach of the year by the Associated Press in 2017. Now the offense is going to be designed to fit Drew Locke like a glove by using three wide receiver sets, throwing the ball deep off of play action passes and also running a football which is going to keep Philip Lindsay happy. Now he Here's where Shermer will have to improve. The Broncos offense is wrapped around the number 28 like crazy as Denver was 28th in scoring, passing offense and total yards and the team also had the fewest touchdown passes in the NFL. Now as the Broncos go into the offseason look for them to target a wide receiver in the draft. Several mock drafts on CBS Sports have the Broncos linked to two wide receivers Henry Ruggs the third and Jerry Judy. Both of those guys are from Alabama. Also we're keeping an eye on what's happening with the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Yeah. They have made seven selections to the senior committee. Three more to go. Randy Gratishaw's name has not been called yet so We'll keep an eye on that. But we all think he's going to make that list. Well, we all think. We hope. We pray. It better mm -hmm. happen. But we'll you see. You can't keep a guy who was on the Orange Crush defense crushing bones for years yes. out of the hall. Exactly. And another yeah. guy who has over 2,000 tackles, for goodness sake. Yeah. Two that NFL. 2,000 tackles? <laughs> 2,000 tackles? Get this guy in the Hall of Let's Fame already. Listen up, everybody. <laughs> Justin, thank you so much. <laughs> There is a good question this morning about whether the Broncos just scooped up the best wide receiver in the NFL draft. Justin Adams joining us right now, and uh, he was the second receiver picked, mm -hmm. but could easily be called the, the best receiver, the top receiver. And, of course, you mentioned this. You said yesterday this is going to be the guy they're going to get. I, I can't believe you pulled that off. Well, this is the reason why you also got to watch us in the morning on CBSN, too, because I give you knowledge, baby. That's exactly what I love to oh, do. Boy. Drew Locke went to bed last night with a big smile on his face as the Broncos picked up Jerry Judy with the 15th pick in the first round. And here's how it sounded when John Elway made the call to his new wide receiver. Jerry, John Elway, congratulations. You're going to be a Bronco. We're looking forward to it. Well deserved. We were... Hoping you'd make it to us and you did. 
So why was John always so excited? Well, here's why. Jerry Judy is the best route runner in the draft, and it showed in college. He had 159 catches and 26 touchdowns at Alabama. Judy also has the confidence to play in slot or attack outside the numbers as well. Now, the move not only helps out Drew Locke, but it also opens up the rest of the offense. Now, Judy talks about why it's so important for him to create space on the field. If I'm if I'm if I'm getting open and creating five six yards of separation every time, that means more yards and just good to be able to be like one of the top route runners. So what was the reaction from Drew Locke's teammates? Well, as you see, that's Cortland Sutton, and he just said, ooh, we. And Broncos wide receivers coach Zach Asani, he just had his hands raised in excitement. But my favorite reaction came from Drew Locke. Jerry, Judy, baby, let's go. Man, as a fellow SEC guy, I've been watching you make plays for years. I'm just happy you're on my team now, man. We got something special rolling here in Denver. Yes, they do. Now, Judy becomes the highest drafted wide receiver in Broncos history, and the Broncos have nine picks remaining in the NFL draft. So look for them to add a center, an inside linebacker, and more cornerback depth tonight as well. So great job mm -hmm. by the Denver Broncos in order to get that done. Allen, I know I called it. It's okay. I did call it. But you know what? <laughs> It's the right move that the Orange and Blue made. <laughs> All right, we got to give you props thank on this. You, thank, I, you, thank, I, you, thank you, thank you. But I'm trying to understand why was he still there? That is a great question. Yeah. You know, Henry Ruggs the third. He went to the Las Vegas Raiders um, at 12, and so that was really one of the spots where the Broncos didn't know exactly what would have happened. But I mean, in any case, you get yourself a really good wide receiver. And that was a priority for the Broncos anyway. They had the fewest uh, receiving touchdowns last year. They were able to get him, and now they're able to build with the offense as well. Yeah, I, I'm with you. That Drew Locke message is awesome. Oh, it's great. It's great it's, to see. Isn't it great? That's just what you want your quarterback, your franchise yep. quarterback to do. Starting to build from the ground up, and I love it. What seemed like an impossible feat. Nuggets sure proved the doubters wrong. Yes. I was one of them. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and they solidified themselves. It's really the team to watch out for. Mm -hmm. You weren't the only one. I don't think we thought we would be here talking about this this morning. Justin is here now. The Nuggets heading to the Western Conference Finals, as we mentioned, for the first time in over a decade, which mm -hmm. is just amazing. And I know that they have all sorts of records that they've made along the way. That's right. There's a lot of records that the Nuggets did break, and they did it in a fantastic fashion last night as well. But let's be honest for a moment. When the Nuggets were down 3-1 to one to the Los Angeles Clippers. You didn't actually think they would come back and win this series, right? Well, that's exactly what they did last night, and they looked good in the process. To Game 7 we go, the Nuggets versus the heavily favored Los Angeles Clippers, and the Clippers were up by double digits. They were up by 12 in the second quarter before Jamal Murray went off, and he started to warm up, first hitting that three from the top of the key, and he scored 20 points, 20 in the second quarter alone. Nuggets were down two at halftime, and then it was all Nuggets from there. They went on a 35-13 to 13 run and built up a 15-point lead in the fourth quarter as Murray knocked home another triple. Now, let's not forget about the other guy. Yeah, Nikola Jokic. He had a triple-double with 16 points, 13 assists, and 22 rebounds. But this was the closer right here. Jamal Murray being guarded by Kawhi Leonard, and right in his face, he knocks home the three. Murray had 40 points. Now we go back on defense and the Nuggets actually learn how to do that somehow in the postseason. Here comes Kawhi Leonard with the rock. It's stolen away. Outlet pass and Jeremy Grant is going to slam it home. Denver routes the Clippers 104 to 89 and advance to the Western Conference Finals for the first time since 2009. All the guys committed, never got down, believed in each other, believed in themselves uh, in light of you know, all the noise outside of this series that we had no chance. We had people guaranteeing it, and we, we found a way to, to be a really good team three times. All right, here's some records the Nuggets did break. Britt, you wanted to find out what they are. Here they are. Denver became the first team in NBA history to overcome two 3-1 deficits in the same postseason. Also, check this out. The Nuggets are 6-0 in elimination games. That ties the record set by the Denver Nuggets in 1994. How cool is that? And Nikola Jokic becomes only the second player in NBA history to record at least 15 points, 
12 assists and 20 rebounds in a playoff game. The other guy who did that was a guy by the name of Wilt Chamberlain. I think he's pretty good at basketball. Now the Nuggets will take on the Los Angeles Lakers in the Western Conference Finals starting on Friday and at 630 we're going to give you a preview of that series as well. But it's all about what they did last night. Yes. So much fun from the Nuggets. You know they might have broken another record. I'm hearing that it was Coach Malone's 49th birthday. Mm -hmm. So what a sweet birthday surprise that win was. It was awesome. Actually Nicole Jokic said this. He said Coach either we're going to have you come home for your birthday <laughs> or we're going to take you to the Western Conference Finals. And that's Either what they're way. doing. Let's do it.